Okay. Welcome, welcome to the One Within All. If anybody has jumped in the stream yet, you're listening to an Interverse live stream, which is, to be fair, experimental, but I think it's going to be no less uh, weird and experimental than the music that these guys make. Say what's up to Deep Sequence. Hey, everybody. Yo, yo. What's up, everybody? Hello. Hey. I, I have a list of your names, but since you're here and we can see who's talking, we even have video, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Uh, everyone knows you're the psychedelic power funk band of the future, but uh, <laughs> who are you as human beings? <laughs> I'm Jonathan Degazarian, uh, guitarist and bassist. I'm Jared Ives, the drummer. I'm Brady Cagle, and I play keyboards. I'm Jackson Diner, and I play mostly bass, but also guitar. Really, really cool to have you guys here. Uh, let's yeah. see. We're here to talk about Cloud Spires, a single that you guys just put out, which is, uh, it says on the page, you have someone quoted from uh, Deadhead Productions, Cloud Spires is an 11-minute instrumental epic with multiple huge stylistic and tonal shifts. It never settles into one gear too long. Through the building tension and heavy metal-flavored riffs, the elements of funk are never lost. I think yeah, uh, he is. it's hard to put music into words, but um, what else would you say? Yeah, that's about? Brandon, Brandon Carter. He's amazing with his words. Yeah, he really uh, is. Great so, music writer. What, uh, what inspired, you know, what you guys call cloud spires? <laughs> is it a lot? Okay. <laughs> I want to hear more about it. I want to hear more about it from, from all of you. All right. So basically um, the, the initial riff that, cloud spires is based off of which you hear kind of in the beginning was written like over a year ago yeah, but I, I, I don't know i feel like brady and i were like messing around with yeah that. yeah maybe, maybe even two years ago yeah like it was before the band was it was there. before the band was even a thing and or us as a whole being deep sequence and it was just like a riff that i can't remember if it's me or john wrote it or if i wrote it on mandolin or whatever but we had always jammed that dun 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 for just like the longest time. And uh, you can even, I mean, I don't know where the recordings are, but I remember at some of our very first shows, we would go into jams with that riff and not go anywhere past it, just play that. So like that would come up in practice every now and then when we were still writing like our first few tracks, right? And uh, and it was, we would always be kind of stuck and be like, well, you know, we could take it here, we could take it there, but it wasn't, but it wasn't until like well into a year of us being <clears throat> like fully active and, you know, playing shows and stuff that we started to really crunch down and focus on that track. And uh, John <clears throat> wrote a few more riffs that we weren't really sure where to put in the song. They were just going to be somewhere. And then so we just kept playing it and playing it. And then surely enough, like something happened and I was just like, let's make a heavy part. And then Jackson was like writing all these sweet bass lines and the whole thing just kind of like sewed itself together mm -hmm. in the most like weird and mystic way that I could imagine. Like nobody, none of us expected the song to turn out the way that it did. Like with all the twists and turns, like my original thought was, wow, this is going to be a nice, chill, groovy song. Yeah, I always pictured it. I always pictured it like a like a string cheese incident song, like just real like jiggy. Because that first one, the da -da 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 -da, this reminded me of being like a string cheese incident crowd, where it's like almost bluegrassy jam, happy. But uh, it didn't go that way. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we went straight down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we let it. We totally let it. Like just like converge us uh, into just this one unit where like you know we all have all these different musical backgrounds and in this song you can really hear that uh -huh. like you can you can totally hear like every bit of influence that comes through all of us as individuals like working together and making this like a cohesive piece mm -hmm. and it was honestly i think it's the first the first song that we have that really captivates like that everything that entirety yeah. that makes us like the group that we are all right exactly <laughs> well uh good news guys we had an issue where people were getting a wicked bad echo from the way that i had this set up I, <laughs> like i said still a little bit of a 
newbie at live streaming, but I am 90% sure based on what the comments have said that people now can hear us correctly. So hooray. Wait, so we got to say all that over again. <laughs> <laughs> it was maybe like, right. <laughs> just, listen to, just listen to the song. Yeah, you'll, it covers it. <laughs> well, I have to say all that over again. It was just the beginning where I, um, the echo was happening. I think I fixed it pretty quick, assuming that it's fixed. So good news. I mean, we can keep talking about cloud spires, but we can also just talk about some of the upcoming gigs you guys have because that's an exciting topic we're both going to be at backwoods this year and yeah i know that that's an exciting one yeah it's gonna be lit (laughs) (laughs) so excited absolutely lit it's on the mulberry mountain it's like uh the most crunkest place for a festival possible i would say Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, what else are you excited about uh, gig wise? I was checking out all the long list of what you guys are doing oh, on your gosh. website. Holy crap! Well, well next next weekend um, we're headed to Tulsa to play Funk Tulsa. We're headlining at the Shrine there. Uh, then the next day we go to Lawrence, Kansas, to play with some guys called Three Sun Green, who everybody tells me are really, really awesome, and I'm really excited to see them. Uh, then um what do we got after that 420s after that oh, oh yeah 420 oh, yeah. in our hometown that's gonna be it's gonna be huge it's gonna be the, party. It's gonna be the tits yeah, yeah. it's uh-huh. gonna be like our first like real deep sequence party like of the year for us like here in, in our hometown mm-hmm. and uh four quarter bar yeah four quarter like last time we played four quarter bar it was like it was a madhouse. It was yeah. so cool. And so I can only imagine how much more epic it's going to be on 420. Yes. Got a bunch of reggae covers and uh, well, 4, 4, 4, 420, like you know, smoke weed, you know. <laughs> 420. Uh, so we're going to get some like reggae covers and maybe some, uh, I don't know. Actually, you guys should go ahead and give us some some uh, suggestions of what you want to hear us cover. Uh Feel free. Yeah, that'd be we, tight. We, we so, might not do everything, but we might do something. We might so. do something. Or at least yeah. throw it in the jam, something. It's we're worth, it's worth it. telling. We're just not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to even play the fucking show. Throw your cover requests yeah. in the uh, comments here, or yeah, if this yeah. isn't, if you're playing this back later after we republish it, not the live stream, just throw it in the comments there. Or just tell them, we, I want this covered. And then uh, hopefully we'll get yeah. you guys so many requests that you have to make a rule to never ask again. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Quit telling us what to fucking play. <laughs> we might have enough covers to last the whole year. <laughs> yes. We even have to write new songs. No, yeah, yeah, like that. Writing songs is overrated. It takes anyway. too long. <laughs> Just make it up as you go, right? I'm sure that that's a lot of it anyway. But yeah, so after 420, like, I'm super stoked about Backwoods because there's going to be some, like, really important names on that lineup that kind of interject with what we're doing a lot. And it's going to be a really amazing experience. Like we're playing main stage this time, which is, yeah, dude. Surprise. (laughs) What about you, Brady? Is Flintwick playing any main stage action? Are you going to be down in the EDM stage? No, no, I'm going to be at the the EDM stage again this year. I would Uh say. And that was also, I will, I'll just throw out there. That was one of my favorite parts of Backwoods last year was uh, running to get to your set because I wanted to catch Emancipator and then staying for your entire set and then sprinting back across yeah. the mountain to get to the Floozies, which I only missed a little bit of. Yeah. That was like the greatest yeah. two hours of the whole festival. It. <laughs> it made my heart so happy too because like the whole the whole festival, I'm like, well, shit, everybody's going to be at the Emancipator set during my time. I want to be at the Emancipator set. Yeah. It turned out, pretty far. dude. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it ended up like all the homies and like so many people ended up making that set. Like you were, you were there, you know, like it was a lot more people than I expected. And it just made my heart so happy more than so many other shows. Yeah. But uh, yeah, hopefully they bring back that Hennessy rig again this year. Cause yeah. that is like my favorite. Hennessy. It's made for the sound. Well, uh, yeah. Everyone here might already know you, or maybe they only know some of you, but because we did have that audio glitch at the beginning, remind us who you each are and what you do in the band sometimes. <laughs> Jonathan Derizarian, uh guitar and bass. Jared Ives, drums, percussion, beatbox. Jared Ives, fuck. <laughs> uh, no, Brady Cagle, and I do uh, keyboards and synthesizer and that stuff. Jackson Diner and I play bass and guitar. 
okay, cool. And now we have that fully done and you're double introduced. And we've actually been holding on to like a dozen or so people on the uh, live stream, which is pretty good, I would say, especially considering, you know, this is our first one. But I bet we can do this again for future events you want to promote or future tracks or uh, album releases because this is fun. (laughs) And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, also we also get to hang out with chance yeah. you know, i make it up to springfield too often i can see my boy I, I know and i don't get out of this studio very often because of doing this i, I, I understand that a lot hopefully, we'll lock you doors. <laughs> hopefully it's cozy it totally is uh i finally just did some amazing renovations to my studio space so that i can i not you know guys on the live stream can't see this right now i'll switch it over so you can but uh I'm standing up, which is amazing. I'm using a computer. Hey. I'm talking on a podcast, and I'm standing up. It's like you got one of those standing desks. Uh, uh, I, got a, <laughs> I got this. Is just a, a pro tip, not related to music, but you guys should figure out a way to stand up at your desk. All I had to do was get a laptop uh, tray that you would normally like put over your lap that has legs on it and then put my keyboard and mouse on that and then just get a box of comic books i i haven't read for a long time and put the uh, monitor under that and then bada bing bada boom i'm standing and talking so they say sitting is the new smoking and i know a lot of us are going to probably keep smoking so maybe we should stop sitting so much <laughs> not to call you guys out right there on your couch <laughs> Yeah, no, this is a jewel, I should man. stand up. Oh, yeah, let's all just stand. Yeah, up. hey, what's up, Jason? What's up? Your Jay? job, you guys stand up. You know, you stand up and rock out. You sweat a lot on stage, right? Like, what's the sweatiest you've ever been at a show? Oh shit, <laughs> those really crammed little stages. I say that Blackthorn and yeah. Joplin. That's Joplin. exactly Joplin, what I was thinking. Dude, oh, God. I was drenched from head to toe. Like was, you see this couch that was about the size of the stage. Yeah, yeah and dude. somehow we crammed it all on uh-huh. there. And uh, and the room was really packed too, so it was yeah. just it was insane. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty much back to back, crack to crack. I, in that house. <laughs> I was drenched when I got out of there. I Whenever, about these guys. Whenever John takes his shirt off, that's how you know it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't really like taking my shirt off, but there's points. I was about to so cut my no fucking hair off. in the middle of that set. What a lot of people don't know is that John actually has like a chest piece tattoo. And it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's a he bald got, eagle yeah, on the American, American fucking flag. Yeah, he, got, <laughs> he got it in prison. But <laughs> when he was 14, he went to prison for seven years. And some so say, that's why it's, none of us some say it's a bald eagle. Some say it's a turkey vulture. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, it's definitely a prison tattoo. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that's the kind of story I'm hoping to get a more of. Like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in a minute guys we're gonna go ahead and play the new single that we're here to debut um but we have someone in the chat that has asked that you guys talk about what brought you together as a group i think that would be pretty cool and i'd love to hear that story so let's do it so destiny (laughs) simple as that next question (laughs) no i'm just kidding no so okay so about (laughs) <laughs> four or five years ago maybe even longer uh we used to go to bird fest me and jonathan used to go to bird fest and i was a young little kid didn't have too many friends or uh festy fam or anything <laughs> i remember <laughs> <laughs> and i uh i went to a bird fest and met jonathan and i just thought he's such a cool dude we really hit it off you know saw each other a few times and then like next bird fest or a couple bird fests later and by the way bird fest is a small music festival in in arkansas um in ozark and uh so and then i saw jonathan another time and found out he plays guitar and you know back then i played mandolin i always go to festivals play my mandolin everywhere he still plays mandolin i still play i still play mandolin sometimes Um, put put a fucking mandolin in my hand (laughs) there you uh no but uh so and then i found out jonathan plays guitar and we had a short jam maybe like an hour or something then i hadn't seen him for another year or so i ended up moving to little rock and i pull into the apartment complex and i almost feel like it was the first night and I find out Jonathan, Jonathan's girlfriend lives there and he basically lives there too. And I drive by and I see him and I'm like, Jonathan, what's up, dude? And you know, we're like, what's going on? So we start hanging out at the apartments and back then I was doing my live looping thing. And so Jonathan would come over and jam. And after a while we just started writing songs 
together on the mandolin and acoustic guitar. So like a lot of the songs on the Midnight Snack EP and, you know, a couple random riffs were written on mandolin and guitar. So me and Jonathan did that for a while and we we're like, you know, we should try to make this a thing. And uh, we met a drummer, Preston Tackett, really amazing funk drummer, jammed with him a few, like, you know, a good amount of times. And it was just the three of us. After a while, we we're like, man, we need bass. Uh, we we're thinking of who around the area. And I, I personally didn't know too many musicians around Little Rock. But I did know about Jackson Diner, a fucking amazing guitarist. And we're like, huh, I wonder if we can convince them to play bass. And sure enough, we were able to do that. Which worked out really well. Take because much he didn't yeah. take much convincing. <laughs> and he was super down. And, you know, like all of us were on the same page uh, as far as our music tastes. And it's worked out really well also that Jackson is, a, is a primarily a guitarist. Because, uh, because uh, yeah, I, I was originally a bassist. So, and I still love the bass and he still loves the guitar. So uh, it's great to be able to like swap off. Like yeah. That. Do a little switcheroos. Well, that, that's two brilliant. Completely different. I, I, uh, I def- definitely right. play both of those instruments in bands and love switching between them. I haven't played in a band for years. Yeah. But, all right. What, what were you about to say, man? I kind of cut in there. Oh, that's okay. I just think it's cool that John and I have different approaches to our instruments. And right. It sounds yeah. really well. And You're listening to a recording. You can tell if it's Jackson playing guitar or, or Jonathan playing guitar. It's, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really yeah. refreshing. Or bass, yeah. So, so backtrack a, a smidge. Jared and I were in a band together <laughs> uh, called Auto Dreamer uh, yeah. a couple of years before that. Then uh, then that band dissolved. And, uh, but, and all the while, I was like, man, if there, there's... There's a drummer out there. I mean, Preston's pretty awesome, but like Jared's got this like flavor to him that like y'all are gonna really, really dig. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then one day we convinced him to come over and jam. And then I think it was at the end of, or maybe at the beginning of that practice, we all kind of knew. All right, well, we're a band now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, another little backtrack. We we didn't lose our other drummer to Jared. The other drummer was busy with the work, and so we were like, we should start looking at other options. So yeah, that's that's where the switch happened. He's got like a legit like nine. Yeah, he had like a legit job, and we're like, you know, we gotta we gotta tour and play that stuff. We're like, who's the other fucking amazing drummer, Jared? So we and Jared's, you know, growing up metal drummer, so like it added this whole flavor that's so key to Deep Sequence now that. I don't know. It's, it just it is a perfect fit. That's what I yeah, love sure. about it. I mean, you guys really put the power in power funk. I mean, if that's even a genre, <laughs> it's yeah, pretty metal. It is I love that about it. I feel like it's totally becoming its own thing, right? Like over almost the last ten years, I've been like dedicated to playing metal. Uh, of all forms, I used to play guitar and do vocals in a black metal death metal band called Wraith. And uh, that was kind of how I got plugged into the Little Rock scene. And like after about like six solid years of that, like I finally started kind of like getting more involved in other scenes. And I went to festivals and I actually met John and Brady and Jackson at Flux Fest all at different times. And Flux Fest, for those who don't know, is a really awesome uh, fest that we have here in central Arkansas based out of Greenbrier. And um that was literally what did it for me. Like that fest was my, it was my first festival ever. And I was introduced to so many awesome people. And like I said before, um, my old band auto dreamer, uh, which John ended up joining later on, we played our first show at flux fest. And it was the reason I even ever got to know this dude was because I saw them play and it was like, man, they, uh, they're really awesome. I feel like they could use a bassist. And, uh, yeah, we didn't have we didn't have a bass player. There's we something had missing we here. Had got, like, keys and vocals who would pick up a bass every now and then. And then we had a, my buddy JP on guitar, and um, and so like we played a lot as Auto Dreamer, and eventually like that band just kind of I don't want to say fell apart, just kind of stopped moving, and so. You know, fast forward a couple years and I see Brady and John at uh, this show over at Arkansas Circus Arts and they're both like uh, at different occasions. Like, Man, I really want you to come jam with us. And at the time I was thinking, man, I'm really busy. Like I got all this stuff going on. I don't really know if I can balance another project. But then like 
I decided to give it a shot. And after the first time I went out and jammed, uh, it was like, okay, yeah, this is, this is legit. Like I could actually see these guys wanting to take it to the next level and move the way that I would like to. I, I even remember like at the end of that practice, I was, uh, me saying to everybody, all right, so are we like ready to do this thing? Like for real? Yeah. Cause like, <laughs> cause, like you know, we could, we could dick around and have fun and play local shows, but I really feel like we could just do this thing for real. And, uh, and everyone was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. We are, we are trying yeah. to do that. Yeah, you guys can do it for real. <laughs> it's ha- it's definitely <laughs> blown it up. It's really cool. I mean, like we said earlier, you're playing main stage at Backwoods, but how long have you guys even actually been a band? And what I think is so beautiful is like there's synchronicity involved with this. And the listeners out there who play instruments, the thing between you and being in a pa- badass band like Deep Sequence is, well, A, you got to practice as much as you guys all have practiced individually and practice. together. Definitely practice, but B, is to just start making music. Would you agree that you get mm-hmm. a big skill boost uh, speed-wise from playing together in a way that just practicing oh, yeah. alone doesn't quite do? Yeah, you, it forces yeah. you to it. Like, you have to practice. Yeah, because I'm not, not going to let let them, like... Let my I'm not gonna let myself not be able to keep up with them, and then and it's all vice versa every yeah. direction, you know. So we're like, you know, you don't want to be the lowest common denominator there, You're the weak link. You gotta right. keep pushing yourself. Now that being said, in, individual yeah. practice is still really important because you gotta maintain your chops and and you also want to keep pushing forward all the time. Yeah, we had a question it's in the my- comments. Uh, how do you share the creative bed without hogging the covers? <laughs> I think I think the most important thing in that aspect, and this has been so many projects struggle with this. It's listening to each other, like not only whenever you're playing, but actually in conversation, like hearing each other's ideas and legitimately trying them, not just saying, oh, I don't really like this. The idea of that. or I don't like the sound of that. We literally try everything. Mm -hmm. And if we don't like it, like we don't like it and nobody gets their feelings hurt about it. But if we do like it, then that just brings this awesome new flavor. And that's kind of what happened with Cloud Spires was just like, at first we were just trying to think of what we could even do. And like each person brings a different idea to the table and it's just a huge trial and error process. And as I mentioned earlier, like you can't get your feelings hurt if somebody doesn't like your idea because we're all full of ideas, you know, some are good, some aren't good. And that's just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. What's cool is that 90% of the time when it's right, it's right. And everyone agrees. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a feeling. Yeah. (laughs) Another question about your process here. Uh, Peyton Lacey in the chat, she wanted to know. It's my boy. Hey, you're my boy. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Oh, it's a dude. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get mixed up on what gender certain names are. <laughs> it's, it's still our pay <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's still pay hey, dude. I mean, yeah. we all have both in masculine and feminine within, right? <laughs> he says, though, that you guys are uh, rekindling his desire to be in a band with friends again, which I think is awesome because, uh-huh. I mean, regardless of what stage you get on, the real magic is feeling the music get you in sync with the other members of the band and that flow state that occurs. So I hope that you do get that going even with one other person and just snowball from there. But he, he says to overcome the struggle of writing music as a group, he would like to know what your workflow is like for writing songs since you've, Mm -hmm. or is there not really a process? (laughs) Is it random? It's definitely a process. There's a loose, a very loose process. And it's always different every song, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's something that, that you always have to remember is that every song is like its own like organism, you know, Mm -hmm. and then you have to treat it (laughs) however it wants to be treated, you know? And, uh, uh, but, um, the, the 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 shortest answer is usually one of us will write like you know 70 percent of something and then and then be like all right come check this out and then we'll all kind of know what are the what where it's lagging and where it's you know mm-hmm. what where it needs some more something and then you know we just play it through and jam it a little bit and uh, Add jam parts. helps a lot you know yeah because mm-hmm. then you, you come up with some cool sort of cool little bit and then you're like oh snap okay let's keep this for sure and then we'll just put that in there. So, so usually, yeah, you come, come at it with, 
with most of the song written by one or two people usually. Um, and then you, and then you bring it to the rest of the band and then get, get all their input. Yeah. And then we all add our parts, you know, where we seem fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get to the point where we're like, maybe switching around the initial skeleton of it. Like one of us will be like, uh, yeah, now I don't really like that initial riff. Like what if we switched that, that riff a with riff B and, uh, like, so that happens. And then playing it live a few times also helps. So like there's, there's a few songs or a few rip parts of songs that were written in live improv. Like we'll, take like most of the structure of the song and like maybe throw it in a jam for the first time to play it live, not make it a big deal. Like, yo, we have a new song. It's like, we'll work it into something, see how it works with the crowd. Mm -hmm. Then we'll listen back to the recording and hear this awesome jam that we went into. And we're like, let's just take that hook and make that a, like a riff of the song because that worked out really well in that jam. Yeah. And sometimes it'll be random riffs and improv jams from a completely different song that we always kind of go into that jam and we'll hear it and be like, that would sound awesome in this new song that we're working on. Let's do that. So yeah, but that's, that's, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Uh, on a, on a loose, loose so, way to explain it. So it's like our genre that we could, we would classify ourselves at would be like power funk, but it's still so important to take note that we're a jam band. And so much of what we do is based off of improvisation, especially in a live setting. Like almost 50% of our live set is improv in the moment, just making something up out of whatever song we were in. And that process works very similarly with our writing process. If we have like a handful of riffs that we're like jamming on and we just start playing them, eventually we're just going to, keep jamming and just like feeling it out in the moment and something will happen most of the time we'll take it somewhere that none of us really expected and like as brady mentioned earlier uh when we we all like put our own parts into it right and once that happens the feel of the song kind of changes a bit especially like if they wrote a riff without drums you know and i'm just like i just lay down a drum beat a lot of times they're like that's not at all what i had in mind and I'm just like, well, this is what I'm feeling. And they're like, either I like it or I don't like it. But it like governs the whole initial like groove aspect of what we're doing. And so uh, with all that being said, like, I think that just playing in the moment and jamming is the most important aspect of what we do as a band. I think that's awesome because to me, that's like you're saying the flow state itself and tapping into that is what is most important. So it's not really about like, I mean, someone starts the jam, sure, but it's not really about one person being the conductor of everybody else. It's that the mm -hmm. spirit that you all are tapping into, like that, literally like that divine flow sp state spark is the uh, conductor. <laughs> yeah. You guys are just yeah. like a it conduit. Just You're just like a five piece conduit for it <laughs> or four, pe four piece. No, there's a cat on the couch. I'm sorry. That's Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> Here with us sometimes. But that's what that's what makes it so important to see us live. And, or you can say the yeah. fifth piece is the spirit I'm talking about. Kind of like the Greek oh, yeah. in mm -hmm. ancient Greece and like modern occultism, there's the four elements, and then the fifth element is the quintessence or spirit, and that's what like the the, the uh, pentagram represents. So you guys have got the four yeah, physical pretty. parts, and then the spirit yeah. is the fifth part. I think you're I really like four pieces <laughs> because I think it's super balanced, and you guys definitely have a tight sound, probably because the, the guitar and bass interchangeability allows that regardless of who's playing which you guys are super like lined up with each other in that prog metal type of way and i think that's where the power in the power funk is really at besides the metal drums of course metal drums yeah, yeah i love you guys yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't know <laughs> awesome, dude. thank you let me check yeah man like we love to get really technical and like pick each other's brains and like you know, I, f I find it fun and amusing when we can challenge each other to play something out of our comfort zone. And like yeah. sometimes John or me or J anybody will write a riff um, because we all play other instruments as well. Um, we'll write a riff that somebody else like might not be able to play right off the bat. And we'll have to spend a lot of time on our own or in practice, like trying to nail it out. 
And that's a whole other aspect that I don't think we tackled earlier is like, we, we kind of help each other grow as musicians in that way, because we all have these different perspectives of how we want to hear a song or how we want to like to play our instruments. And so like, it's all of us like combining these efforts. We have this nerdy aspect and we have this like spiritual aspect that kind of like come together and form like what this is. That's cool. Uh, I like that fusion. (laughs) Uh, It sort of dovetails into a question Kat Hicks had in the comments, which is uh, who are some of your biggest inspirations, which is a great question. Yeah, let's just go down the line. Well, first, Cat Hicks. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I could tell a story about being super inspired by her a couple of years back in relation to music. But you guys give your, and it's going to involve Tool, which you guys, I'm sure, will say is an influence, at least somewhere. I mean, I sort of like Tool. Jackson doesn't like Tool, but I do. At least some of you do, right? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, one of my big, a couple of my big influences are like Primus and Dopapod and Talk. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think the most, <clears throat> in, in my opinion, the most influential force in the entire the band as a whole has to be Fish. And I don't I don't want I know like kind of hold it back because people hate Fish and you know it's too jam bandy. But me, Jackson, and John that is our biggest common ground. I think is our yeah, love for uh, fish and my keyboard style comes directly from Paige McConnell and, you know, Herbie Hancock and all these other amazing yeah. keyboardists, but my style and the way I switch between things and where I feel jam should go is a lot related to Paige McConnell of fish. And you can hear Jackson's bass run sound like at times a lot like Mike Gordon. And like, we, yeah. that's, that's the general thing. Not that like we say fish is our biggest influence as a band, but I think that's an understood thing yeah. in the background of us as musicians. So like my, my biggest influences as an individual, just musician would definitely be bands like Polyphia, uh, Chon. Uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of hip hop. I really dig J Cole. I really dig J I D and yellow wolf are like three of my favorite hip hop acts at the moment. And we're finna bring the bring the drum sample pad back into the mix, yeah, and get some more. We're gonna get eights and hip hop beats going on. Uh, you will definitely be yeah. hearing a lot more hip hop influence in our music, uh-huh. and awesome. hopefully that uh, means collaboration about it too. Yeah, you know? I love Anderson Pack, and just uh, I love music in general. But m- as just like an individual, what I what mostly drives me is progressive metal. But uh, yeah, that being said, um, I guess uh, Jackson and Jerry. Metal, just so, to, to jump in there, is like this amazing cerebral art form. I remember being mind blown by bands like Dream Theater for years before I oh, got yeah. into electronic mm-hmm. music. And then what actually led me into liking electronic music was that uh, full spectrum of sounds and instruments that you can get while still having the complexity like i like complextro right so that's why i'm so yeah. into flintwick it is right up my, my yeah. like <laughs> crunchy <laughs> organic <laughs> crazy <laughs> predictability yes. right that's that's where it's that at is the unpredictability be. and yeah, yeah deep sequence carries that really well but also has like a uh, a whole bunch of other things going on with it. I, I, was, I have other questions from some of the chat people. Paul Williams wanted yeah. to know where you got the sweet picture for the new track. Oh, oh man, wow. that's our good friend Bruce Carpenter. Definitely look him up. Uh, He's his, a magician. His, his Facebook, I think it's called Arts of Bruce. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's just fantastic. And we're, we're we were took us forever to figure out what we were going to use as art. And then we were like, man, why don't we holler at Bruce? He's, yeah. like, he's got like that perfect sl- playful, uh, but uh, playful style and yet mystical, mystical. Mm-hmm. And uh, yet also I think he can get like some sort of aspect of the edge. Yeah. And the, as well. and the boldness, I think is what I really yeah. like about it. Yeah. yeah. The bold abstract. Yeah. Definitely check out Bruce Carpenter. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we had this like vision in our head of like, we kind of wanted it to like almost mock the, uh, the Spyro level cloud spires. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and so like, you know, we gave him some images and told him kind of what we wanted and he ended up making it 
perfect guys right? make sure like, you link exactly him in the well, uh, chat or in the comments later so that we can definitely yeah, get sure. this homie uh, linked up to because i mean i totally. love awesome artists uh, obviously that's sort of what my whole thing yeah. is with this podcast <laughs> so yeah. you are an awesome like artist <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just to, just to throw this out there um back in november they released the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, which I personally was super excited about because that was the only video game that I love so much that I finished it 100%. I'm not like a gamer. So it's just the only a- game you ever finished? Oh, yeah, no. it is. It is. <laughs> Well, okay, okay. Okay. I finished. I finished Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, anyway. Like so through the played through the arcade mode. Yeah. 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 So, so, so it's like so I was thirty really minutes of gameplay. <laughs> that, yeah. that game was super super nostalgic for me, and uh, and I really wanted the single to line up with the release of that game, but it just didn't work out that way. I mean, we just dropped it, but back in November, like we were talking about, you know, doing this. And so that was where the idea came from naming the song after a level on Spyro. And at first, like the guys were just like, I don't know about that. But I was just like, (laughs) John was always down. But, (laughs) but yeah, so I was just like, what about cloud spires? And then it's just like, checked out the level and just the color spectrum and just the idea behind what you go through in that level kind of in a, in a very subtle way reflects what our song, you know, kind of does. But, um, but yeah, that was kind of like the, the main inspiration behind the artwork in general. If you have and the capacity to do a quick search and pull up the image of Cloud Spires from Spyro, it's, it's a neat thing to look at. Yeah. To look at how. In relation to our, to our artwork. Because yeah. like, I don't think that there's going to be any kind of copyright troubles because no. it's not that similar. But it's just similar enough to where you get the idea that it was inspired by that. It made me think of Cloud City Cloud from Star Wars. I wonder if the Spyro artists were inspired by that. <laughs> it, that, 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 so. inspirations. that game came out in two thousands. So. I would argue that just about anybody alive, who's, you know, art in the last like thirty years, forty years, is probably somewhat inspired by Star Wars. <laughs> they, don't, <laughs> they don't realize it. But, yeah, uh, Eric you know. from Joplin wants to know: Are you guys coming to Joplin soon? Yes, yes, sir. Really. Whiskey well, Dicks. Yeah, Whiskey Dicks on April 19th. Awesome. And Dustin it said that? that the guy with the hat on is cool, so I'll let you guys figure out who that is. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah, Jackson says thanks. <laughs> uh, you guys got anything else you want to talk about before we jump over to playing the song? I mean, we can then uh, talk about it for a few minutes after we play it, but... Uh, yeah, no rush, but I kind of want to, we've been talking about it a lot. I kind of want to start getting down, you know, dance for everybody yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's stop it. Yeah. Okay, all right. So are we going to uh, just play the song, then anybody ask questions at any point, we just answer them? Is that uh, how it's going, or are we just going to listen to the whole thing? I think it'd be cool to more or less keep the question answering to the chat if you guys want to like go on phones yeah. for that. And they can yeah. talk to you guys in chat while we listen because it's like an 11 minute epic. So it will be okay to do that. <laughs> but we'll leave our mics on unless there's like a reverberation problem. And then possibly we, yeah, we can all talk over the song when necessary. Uh, like if, if you need to say like, check this out right here. And then, <laughs> and then a drop. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> but if it doesn't sound right, let us know in the chat right away. And we'll just mute the... Uh, we might even do what Kevin says there right in the middle of the song break for questions and then keep going. But yeah, we can answer questions yeah. in chat and answer them with a break in the middle. If you guys want, just like tell me and uh, you can, we can just get, let's do this thing. I mean, it sounds like a good plan. This could also be a good opportunity for us to hit you with our, our the names the, that we simply think of for each of these sections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah just type uh, to me if you want me to pause it yes <laughs> okay cat wants to hear the story about her and tool okay well a few years back at roots and bliss festival there were workshops there it was this uh, festival in missouri and she had i guess made videos about the esoteric tool but she did a workshop talking about it and it was just really mind-blowing it was one of the first times that I started seeing the syncretism between 
every part of nature that we can perceive and some kind of uh, work of art. And anyway, it was, I was not that in pair. <laughs> she said that, that well, hey, it's still. Those bitches need to pay cat right now. Yeah, pay it cat. Was its own reward because I was mad inspired by that. So <laughs> I think people, we should do a podcast about that someday, that very topic. Big shout out real fast to Brian Burkhart. He just joined the chat. He was our recording engineer for this. Oh, yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, I did a phenomenal job. It's, it was such a blast working with him. Definitely check out his uh, studio, Sound Source Studios. Yes. In Fayetteville. Um, not only is it really cool and uh, and uh, professional, it's cozy as hell. And, and Brian's just super cool dude. You know, he plays drums for the for the funk band Groovement. And um, which everybody knows, Groovement, right? Yeah. If you don't, you, you should. Don't. Yeah, you should set up some of things. Get your shit we'll straight, check. boy. Uh, we just got Cole from Cadella joined the chat too. Cadella. Hey, what up, Cole? Hey, Cole. Yo, Cole. All right. Well, um, Jackson, think about yeah. your inspirations while we are listening to the Cloud Spires because afterwards you're going to have to tell us because you never did. <laughs> That's right. I was trying to. Oh, yeah. I need, I need to give mine too. I, I just didn't decide that we like fish, but I have, I have some. Yeah, well. we'll play. Believe it or not, I have your inspirations. <laughs> we'll, play the, we'll play the song and... Um, we might pause it part way, but here we go. Switching over. Yeah, here we go. And if uh, I'll, I'll watch chat, and if we need to mute ourselves, let me know if you can't hear the song well enough. Heard. Watching the Facebook chat. 
Can you hear us? Are we watching it? Yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, it goes without saying, really. <laughs> this is the part of the video game where you're like sneaking around because the boss will kill you because you don't have enough stars. There's a part coming up where my friend Spencer said it sounds like a cat and mouse chase, like a Tom and Jerry scene.
Wow. Okay, I'm going to unmute the band. What's up, guys? That was awesome. Hey there. Thank you. Thank you. And we kept a lot of people with us for that. People so that was all over the planet. Oh, sweet. No, my YouTube. Yeah. Went off. Oops. Okay. All right, I fixed it. <laughs> Dang YouTube commercials. Dang Gaia TV. Damn you, YouTube. Yeah, Gaia conspiracies and stuff no dude they're they're uh controlled opposition oh. <laughs> like the, you're right like the netflix Sorry. of this, that whole thing <laughs> yeah, you can't, oh, can't trust it <laughs> hey but i'm I, call me crazy anyway i'd rather listen to people independent creators that uh aren't part of a multi-million dollar corporation because there's plenty of them that have good information too but yeah, we got man. questions. Um, someone said that the song is too short and he has to play it on repeat. What can you do <laughs> other than hit repeat? Go to our live shows. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Come yeah. on with it. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, take, we'll make it longer. I promise. Yeah, I know it's only 11 minutes, but sometimes it comes to like 20. <laughs> so that kind of answers part of the question that someone had, which was how do you remember all the transitions is a lot of it more improvised or do you try to stick to the album? Like, like what's the ratio of sticking it's to the like, album versus improv? It's sort of like there's a, the way I think about it at least is that each part has its, has its next move, you know? And then if we decide let's extend this part, we all know that once once that's once that jam is done in that section, there's there's always the next part. That that's that's where we're going. Like a lot of bands, you know, whenever they go to the jam, they're like, all right, well, we'll take it back to the head, you know, uh, which is you know like the, like the main theme. But since we're more like progressive, more looking at at the way at what comes next, as opposed to going back to the thing that was. And there's so like. And there's like little, there, there's various sections that we will typically jam, but this is one of those songs that I'm particularly excited about to like start really ripping apart and saying, all right, well, why don't we jam this part that we don't ever jam? Mm -hmm. You know, let's mm -hmm. just, let's extend this. And, uh, and, uh, that's, that's something I've always loved about, about this style of music is the malleability of it live, you know, right. you, you you do whatever you want to with it, it live breathes. and then and then yeah right yeah, yeah. it's its own entity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and sometimes it feels like being longer at this spot and sometimes yeah. it feels like being longer over there and other times it feels like being just exactly how it is on the album uh -huh. that's really really rare yeah yeah and a lot of times before a show we'll be like yeah okay let's play um i don't know like, let's play cloud spires and for the uh for you know what part do we want to jam usually like you know well there's one part in the song that we typically will always jam but say in the future we'll maybe want to we want to jam the quote-unquote harley david davidson riff and then we'll all know what riff that is and we'll know we'll know not to go to that next movement after the but you know we we know our music you know, because we all created it from the ground up, so we know where all the the tiny kinks and twists and turns so you're are. So the show is like a choose your own adventure for you guys, where you're like, do we go on this yeah. branch left or right? Like, <laughs> this is wild. You guys are adapting. And you know, and, and before mm -hmm. we play it, we'll be like, hey, we should we should jam out this part. But mm -hmm. other times, maybe we're just playing the song and we didn't establish where we're going to jam it, and we get to a part where we all kind of look at each other and we're like, damn, the crowd is really feeling this. We're feeling it. Let's we'll look going. at each other. One of us will be, you know, give a hand signal or something. And then we jam that part. And then when we're ready, you know, we'll close it up and then move to the next movement. And there's yeah. a very selfish aspect to that too, because nobody, none of us wants to play the same show twice. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, it's handy that the crowd likes it too, but you know, yeah. Uh, it's kind of gross. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's part of bringing the artistry and the spirit into the music. As much as I love DJs and electronic music, one thing that has made that type of electronic music universe better is that more and more producers are using like different kind of controllers so that there's some sort of live elements of what they're doing. And you guys are just a band like you guys, anything progressive metal uh, oriented is just taking that to the nth degree, like up to 11 for sure. <laughs> it's so fun to watch. It is what makes live music a thing. I mean, all the other forms of live music are just uh, offshoots of the original, like super imaginative, epic bards singing like 9,000 lines of poetry all by memory. Like you guys yeah. are on that level, <laughs> but just musically, it's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> your uh, inspirations. We got to maybe wind towards the end here. I have to go to work. Uh, but uh, tell me, Jackson, your inspirations, and Brady, your inspirations, and then we'll find something to close on too. And if anyone has any questions in the chat, we'll hit those too. Well, uh, as Brady said, you know, I was really big into the jam scene in high school with like fish and all of that but uh i kind of veered in a different direction towards college i got into more avant-garde styles uh more like progressive rock and things like that obviously uh really huge huge into jazz and jazz fusion um i play in another uh band called groove cluster which is also in like an electronic live act uh that incorporates a lot of those same sort of experimental tendencies um, I just really like music that doesn't sound like anything else, honestly. And uh, I try to bring kind of that vibe to some of what we do in deep sequence with it still being accessible. But, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to sound like every other band, you know. We want to have our own unique voice. And I think that the four of us uh, in our own musical differences managed to make something that's, uh, that's very multifaceted, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Really cohesive. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah as far as my inspirations go it's well they're constantly changing like every week i'll have a different inspiration like last week is freaking mariah carey the week before that it was some psychedelic bass producer but in general you know starting out in my music career it was like bluegrass and the grateful dead kind of helped shape it and kicked me off into you know the jam scene and that eventually morphed me into funk and i'd say like like Victor Wooten and Herbie Hancock are kind of like the, in the back of my hand or in the back of my head always, as well as fish. And, uh, but the influences are always coming and like, I'll immediately bring them to my musical repertoire. And, uh, you know, as you know, in the past few years, the psychedelic bass movement and, uh, <laughs> experimental electronic music has really, really like gotten all the bluegrass and funk and then shaped it into this weird spaghetti plate of spaghetti and which I still weird bring spaghetti. back to the, the weird spaghetti. <laughs> and now I bring it back in the deep sequence and like, you can still get the flavors of the bluegrass in the funk and then it'll get the trippy squishy sounds. <laughs> and like, yeah, that's just kind of where my influences lie. Uh, and now just keep, that initial keep an eye out for the for the new release weird spaghetti yeah yeah yep. uh -huh. yeah weird spaghetti coming it's out coming out spaghetti. yesterday mm -hmm. i actually did name the song pocket spaghetti oh <laughs> <laughs> is that spaghetti from the flying we got spaghetti all... monster <laughs> <laughs> they're like cousins yeah it's kind of like like keeping a cross around your neck spaghetti in your pocket it's a convenient snack and it also just keeps you true to your the only true lord the flying spaghetti monster and, right. yeah awesome uh okay what was i going to ask next um i don't think we have any further pressing questions from the fam it's been wild how uh we've kept a, a good viewing party with us this whole time it's awesome i'm we're going to do this again for sure i yeah, thank yeah, everyone yeah, for yeah, being yeah. with us and i hope you're following deep sequence on soundcloud and spotify and youtube and looking to see them at backwoods or upcoming events this year do you guys oh i remember the question i had this was a good question too uh when i first met brady and he's the first one of y'all that i met he was doing 
solo music, not as Flintwick quite yet, but it was basically live looping with a whole bunch of instruments and madness going on. And I love to see uh, Brady <laughs> produce some music that way too, or to see Flintwick go more that direction, I guess. But what I was wondering is if any of the rest of you have any interesting or, or what you consider really fun ways of producing music in a solo sense like what do you do whenever you're just by yourself and you're not jamming with the band i want to hear from all of you guys so uh like i said you know i'm involved in a lot of electronic music uh i like to do like sort of live synth things and that's usually kind of how i start the basis of a lot of my compositions and Mm -hmm. it's all uh you know write some synth tracks in my own studio at my home and like kind of build off of that and uh I also uh, have this really cool uh, radio show every week where we do like a live jam session where we just uh, plug in all of our synths and uh, beat machines. You can check it out. It's on KBF. It's called Perfect Glitch Radio. But uh, I think that's really cool because that, you know, we're forced to just start something and just like make a beat, add a synth line and just keep going. And it goes for an hour. It's totally improvised, but... I think it's a really great exercise, something that you can do, you know, an hour of your time every day. And like, if 20% of it is cool, then I think it's a success, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, that's a good rule of thumb for anything creative or flow steady. Uh-huh. I mean, it's like you're mining for diamonds. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, I definitely uh, want to check out your DJ sets, man. I'm going to have to do that. Make sure we link it in the chat and uh, comments later. Yeah, you should. Groove Cluster rules. Um, On my own time, uh, I play drums with a few other projects as well. Lately, I've been playing with Blake Goodwin, who's an incredible, like, progressive, like, metal and percussive acoustic guitar player. Uh, He just released an album in October called Dissonance, and it doesn't feature me playing drums on the album, but I am doing stuff live with him. But as a solo artist, uh, I go by Prana, the sound wizard, and I'm a beatboxer. And I do a lot of live looping uh, and just solo performing beatbox from anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And it's just a totally raw, organic experience where you hear fully produced music all coming from my voice. And that's I love that. And sometimes with effects. (laughs) Definitely should. Mm -hmm. I'll be I plan on coming up to your area pretty soon. Uh, I haven't booked anything just yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, I've done like five shows locally and they've all gone over really well and I've gotten really good feedback from my peers and it's uh it's really exciting. It's a like, I mean the art form goes back to the eighties, but as far as like how it's developed, it's only been in the last like 10 years really that this art form has really like leveled up and like become a well-known art form globally and it's still like in the beginning stages of its growth so i'm really like honored honestly to be part of something like that uh because i see a really bright future for this this art form and uh jonathan uh, seen you do a dj set let's talk about what all you get up to uh He's a uh, DJ. No, Jonathan's the best DJ in the room. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't do a DJ set. You're confusing me with Space Jesus, actually. When I'm alone doing music, I'm usually like either writing uh, or uh, or working on tech stuff. And, um, and I also dabble in some graphic design. But like I'm really a chronic collaborator. Um, and so like I started this event here in Little Rock that happens once a month, it's called Musical Connection. And basically I just round up as many musician homies as I possibly can. And, uh, and we work out some stuff within that amount of time until the next one and then get together and have like, what something somewhere in between like a, like a, a, a jam showcase or, and like a, um, it's really its own thing you know there's like last time we ended up closing it out with like a seven man cover of chameleon by herbie hancock yes and uh and it was really rad um i'll get i'll get like various musicians from local bands to come and and jam and we'll write stuff we did something with uh this guy named isaac helgestad who's uh 
freaking phenomenal guitarist and he's actually going to be opening for us on 420 at four quarter. Um, and, uh, so, so that's that you could say that's sort of like my, my side project, you know, but I've just never really been too interested in solo music. I, I like my, my bread and butter is what happens whenever you get multiple people can connected and you do something special together. You know, that's, that's my thing. So that being said, anybody watching this, holler at your boy, let's collaborate, let's jam, let's do something. Yeah, I must have mixed you up with some other heady looking, long haired white guy with uh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, DJs. <laughs> uh, I wonder. Uh, awesome. Guys, uh, t- tell us what you want people to know before we close this thing out. This has been a blast, by the way. I've already said that, but I can't express enough how much fun I had. And before we uh get your plugs let's remind everyone that 89 percent of you said funk yeah that you will be seeing deep sequence this year so uh don't make a liar out of yourself make sure that you come funk out with them multiple yeah, times right. <laughs> 11 percent what is a derp sequence so i guess we didn't get through to those people they never <laughs> yeah. those guys are weird Anyway. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, but tell us where people can uh, keep track of everything you're doing and what you want them to know upcoming events and stuff before we finish this bad boy well, off. Facebook, um, that's probably your best bet. Um, Instagram. Instagram. Um, something, so, a big show we didn't mention is Spaceberry on the 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're actually closing that festival out. So I don't know if any of y'all have been to a music festival but you, you usually should try it. you should try it man it's pretty cool and uh usually that last set is like my favorite you know because everybody is just primed to get the last bit of their party out it's at the and farm that, right and course, yeah mm-hmm. it's at the farm mm, you guys and, uh, really like this <laughs> oh yes yeah it's gonna be really really fun and yes. and we assure you we'll play hard we're doing a pre-party for space berry at oh, yeah. george's in fayetteville on may what 17th is that the uh, yeah uh no it's the 18th the may 18th, 18th with um, steady flow steady flow they're actually playing first and so it's gonna be steady it's gonna right. be a george's, gonna flow. george's majestic mm-hmm. Steady flow sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Deeply. It's, it's going to be deep, too. Cool. Deep sequence official on SoundCloud. And, and Instagram. Yeah. All right. Well, well, we'll get some more links thrown up in the chat and on the episode when we publish it. But thanks for being here, each and every one of you. I'm happy to have gotten to know you, everyone that's not Brady a little better. <laughs> and I love hanging out with you, too, Brady. You're, you're the man. Oh, I love hanging out with you. Hey, we'll be in Springfield in uh, June, I think. Uh-huh. Cool. I'll definitely be seeing a lot yeah. of you perform this year. So looking forward yeah. to that. Uh, also, going to plug a Flintwick show. I'm playing there May 11th, I believe, at, uh, at one, one. the Outland with John Teal and Wisdom Traders, David. Mm-hmm. So I want to see you there, what? too. Yeah, maybe me and you and David, uh, Wisdom Traders, can do a little live stream to promote that yeah. <laughs> later. Yeah, let's get let's get all uh, uh, John Teal on, in on it too. I had to have I had to bring him to the show because like Springfield needs this dude. He's such an amazing producer. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs John Teal. He's gonna blow the fuck up. Be there now so you can be like, oh, I saw that dude before he blew the fuck up. Well, yeah. Now that we've done this once, let's make it more of a thing because this was fun and uh, I think yeah, uh, we yeah. got it pretty yeah, figured out. Dude. Thanks for being my guinea pigs on the live stream. Yeah, much love, guys. This is great. Thanks, everyone, for watching in the comments uh, or in the chat uh, and giving us 107 comments. That was awesome. Wow. (laughs) Dang. And nine shares. All right. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Y'all are awesome. All right. Well, let's turn this off. All right. Hugs. Hugs. Digital hug.